Hi everybody, it's Adisha Rad for TK42128 from the 501st Legion Southern California Garrison Los Angeles squad. I've gotten a lot of questions uh, that were addressing the chest pieces of the uh, first order stormtrooper. So I wanted to make another video that just focused on these ones. Obviously this is the standard version, this is the executioner version, and um, this applies to uh, Force Awakens, Last Jedi, Rise of Skywalker, of course, this is Last Jedi. Um, I just wanted to uh, tell you guys a little bit about how I went about doing what I did with each one. There's, there are slight differences in each one of these builds that I want to get into. So uh, let's start with the standard one. Um, so I'm going to take this apart. As you can tell, there's Velcro on the sides. But the chest is held together with a magnet. So one of the things that I want to get into is I cut the pills out, but this back here is actually the decal. And uh, a lot of the movie ones were done with the decals. Um, this chest here has a couple of neat little um, things that I did with it that I didn't go that elaborate in with this one. It's got the two magnets here that help with the pauldron that comes on. And it's got these two magnets here that are covered in ABS. So it's two layers of ABS. The, the one layer has got a hole in it, the magnet goes in it, and then this just acts like a plate. Um, and that's about it. And then there's two Velcro that go on the sides, and this is unpainted. Now, these two magnets, they lock into magnets that are here that are behind. Behind this one are two round disc magnets that kind of just uh, magnify the, the magnets and make it a little bit stronger. Since I can't put it on the chest, it'll make the chest stand out too far. And um, let me see if I can make this to where it's visible. But if you can, you can see the two magnets. And what I did was just added a bracket, just I cu cut it out of ABS. Um, and I made a bracket just to help them stay in. Uh, but also there is a magnet here and here, which that helps with the pauldron. This magnet works with the pauldron, same with these. So the pauldron just comes and snaps onto it. Uh, but that's not really the important part of this. Uh, oh, uh, one more thing. This is not painted. This is uh, really laboriously uh, put together. It's, um, so what I did was I brought the, the, the two pieces over each other, glued it down with CA glue, filed it down, sanded it down to where it was almost perfectly smooth. I used a little bit of ABS slurry to build up the one section and then sanded this down with uh, 600 grit, then 1200 grit, then 2000 grit, and I let the dust build up on the 2000 grit uh, sandpaper and that acted as a buffing compound. So then I just very, very, with the old 2000 grit, just rubbed it in until it all buffed out. And then, uh, then I used a, a Meguiar's, like a clear um, headlight polish and I just added a little bit um, uh, of buffing to the top of that. So that's, that's pretty much that. But what I do want to get into is how um, these particular shoulders are attached versus the other ones. So this is how this is done. There's two snap areas and then there is a, a small buckle that the bicep snaps into. A lot of the other armors are done like this and I wanted to go uh, as close to screen accurate as possible, but I take it to screen accurate, but then give myself a little bit of leniency and something that, for example, if I was building the screen suits, I would have done that I thought would have made it better. Uh, but let's get into right now what we've got going on with these shoulders. So I'm just going to take this off here real quick as well. So there are two ways to do these shoulders. And what I've done is I've cut a piece of ABS that goes from here all the way to here, and it's behind here. And what that does is it reinforces this piece. And then this tab, I used a uh, two layers of ABS. The screen ones are metal. 
Um, I don't want to use metal and I'll tell you guys why because I, I want the ABS to flex a little bit. The metal doesn't, if the ABS doesn't flex, it, it will crack someplace. It will give me a crack someplace here. Where the metal with the thick polyurethane that they use for the screen armor, it, it's much more durable, much more forgiving as well. So they literally just pry those you know, suits of armor open where these ones, we can't pry them. Once you start prying, you're gonna start getting stress cracks. So the ABS allows a little bit of that flexibility. Then I used a fine Dremel and Dremel through here and the tab pierces out through there. As well as the elastic that is, um, attaches the, uh, the shoulder pieces. Now if you notice where my straps are, they're very close to here. And, and the reason for that is because if you, if you strap them down lower, then that shoulder will lift and come over. This will help keep it in place and this tab will keep the shoulder belt exactly where it's supposed to be so that it sits like this, okay? If, if it's not strapped, it will, it will come up and go over like that. So um, this is one way of doing it and you can see it's just meticulously drilled in there. So if you've got the patience to do that, that's what you want to do. And then here's the Velcro. And of course, all these pieces are rounded. I cut this forward so that I have a little bit more room to get in. Anybody who gets into this knows you're, you're trying to swim into it without uh, splitting this, this armor too far open. Okay, so there's that. There's the Velcro magnets here. And uh, then it, that's it. There's just the two magnets here and then the magnets for the uh, chest. So when I bring that up, it just grabs on and that's it, okay? And then you can just Velcro these sides. Now, let's get into the details of this version and how I did this. Um, I prefer this method. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways that the suits that I saw were done. Uh, I don't know if it was an error in the way that they did it or if they evolved or they just realized that it wasn't worth it whatever the way that it was. Um, this, this one is built the way that I like it. And, um, and, I, and it's exactly like a couple of the ones that I saw on set. So um, this is the executioner. So of course it's got the black. Um, I didn't go as elaborate on these pieces here because it was gonna get painted black. So I didn't need to buff out and do all that other uh, stuff. So let's go over what the differences are in the chest. First of all, the pills are cut out and this is cut out. I will actually probably cut the other one out as well. I just wanted to build that one to a specific standard for sets of photos, but then I'm gonna do the cutout like this. It's just nice and cleaner. Now let's talk about just this chest first, and I just wanna show you guys just a little bit difference in, in how I did this. So if you notice, no Velcro. This one has magnets that are on the side. And what I did was I coated, I glued the magnets on with CA glue. It's just a, a bar magnet that goes down here, a rare earth magnet. And then I just put a piece of webbing over it and I glued it down. Um, it also has two magnets here and a magnet in the center of the chest. But also I put two magnets up here. This thing will just come and clamp and everything gets pinned down. All of this gets pinned down. So I'll give you an example of it. I can kip myself up rather easily with this. So all I need to do at that point, just make sure these are out of the way and that's it. This thing just lines itself up and it's good to go. And then you can see here, this is pulling down. Even these little, you'll see when you're building your armor, you'll have a tendency to have this lift. So that pulls that down. I've got three pieces, center, two here, two up here. So one, two, three points of contact there, and then the side. Uh, that's pretty darn nice and important for me to have that. I, I really like that look. So um, I highly recommend you guys uh, doing that. Um, I just think it's a lot easier to pull off without people yanking and cranking. You just start with the magnet on one side and just twist it off and that's it and I did a little bit more simple brackets on the inside of this and then I took the webbing and then I just uh, glued it down that specific style of stretch fabric and then you can see how that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this up here for you guys to see the front and I'm going to hold this up here for you guys to see this is the side with the magnets the 
Those are those magnets, as well as the little magnets that are up top. So that's the chest. Now let's get into the nuts and bolts of this. Once again, this piece here, again, it's, uh, it's overlapped, ABS slurried. I like that. And then it's just painted black, a little extra magnet here, the double magnets back in there. We don't need to get into that. I'm gonna take these shoulders off and I'm gonna show you the difference in how this is done. Once again, I put these little tabs close so that they're not gonna override um, the, the functionality of the uh, tab that keeps the shoulder, uh, keeps that shoulder in place where it needs to be. But let's get into the, um, what I've done here with these shoulders. This is the way that I prefer to do this. I think these shoulders are done better. Um, you'll see on uh, some of the armors, uh, screen used armors, they came up, they cut up and came back down instead of piercing through. Um, it was just a lot less work, especially with the thickness of the urethane, it allowed it to flex. But that gives us an advantage with ABS as well because if there isn't a bottom piece there that's gonna crack, there's no crack to run up. So I can flex this a lot more. And then once again, the bracket underneath here is a long bracket that goes from here to here with this tab sticking out. And it's just a single layer tab. And then the other interesting thing is, is to do your tabs this way, where they don't puncture through here because you're creating more weaknesses. They just come out from underneath and attach that way. I think it's a far superior way to do it. First of all, it's a lot less work. It's a lot less risk of uh, you damaging your armor or making a mistake and running the slip too far. Um, I'm pretty meticulous about doing things like that and, uh, and I know how to fix it and I still don't prefer to do it that way. So I think a lot of the, they just found that it was easier to just cut the little slot for the bracket to go through and then just stick these on. And then unfortunately with this one, it's black, but you can see what I did with the, the brackets here. So they're, the straps run all the way to like, just to give myself a little bit of strength over the bracket plate that's here. And then what I did is I ran another piece of webbing across here just to keep these from lifting up and out that way. So it braces it this way and this way. So that's kind of um, what I went uh, with this path. So now um, without the shoulders on, let's just go ahead and put this thing back on. And if you're just armoring yourself up, that's how quick and easy it grabs. And you can see, how nice that looks. And again, I like this flush look. So it's, uh, um, it, it, it works out really well putting the two magnets here. What I will say is with regards to the screen armor, there's a ton of Velcro that's on underneath it. So they're just ripping Velcro on and off on the sides and stuff like that. But again, you're dealing with a lot more uh, sturdy, a, um, a, a piece of uh, material that urethane is very sturdy where with these, it's ABS, and you're dealing with a lot uh, of more potential uh, cracks and so forth. So um, these are the two different breastplates, uh, and the new Novo, so you can see what's going on with them. One is Velcro on the side, magnets through the body. This one is magnets through the body, magnets on the top, magnets on the side. You're dealing with two uh, slit cuts here, where these ones just come from underneath. And this one has magnets built in here so that the pauldron just comes and slaps on nice and sturdy. As well as if, if you need to have that pauldron removed or say something happens, it pops off nice and easy uh, so that you're not ripping or potentially breaking any of your arm. So that is um, the, the, the differences between these two um, chest plates. Uh, both ways are really good. You can go either way. I prefer this way. Oh, uh, one more thing I want to get into is if you notice how this cut is done. It doesn't come and join up with the other piece which meets down here. It just allows you more room to get in and they were cut like this. Um, and one other thing I'd like to address by the way, it's the ram's horns versus these, uh, these open front, uh, uh, or sorry, closed front chests. This is what the screen ones are. There were specific ones that they just cut and made the Rams horn so, so that it was easy for uh, specific players to get into, probably maybe a handful of them. Uh, I believe the Daniel Craig suit had that. Uh, 
and a lot of people start to cut those ram's horns into it. Don't do it. Um, those ram's horns, first of all, uh, they flex a lot. They're always sticking out of the side of your armor. And if you do do the ram's horns, you're going to find that you're going to put a bracket across the center to try to keep those two together. This is the way that they, that they were. Um, so when you see your kit arrive like this, keep it like this. It adds a lot more durability and strength uh, to the armor in the way the chest attaches, but also in that these don't flare out as you're trooping with your gaskets and everything underneath. You'll see these things will flare out and you'll start getting cracks across your armor. So guys, there we go. There's the chest, both versions of it. You guys can see that. You guys can hit a little pause on the video, zoom in. I'll zoom it in for you. You can see that. So I hope this answers uh, some of the questions for you guys on the uh, first order chest plate. Once again, at a Sherrad Corps, TK42128, Southern California Garrison, Los Angeles Squad. Happy trooping.